mentioned no new taxes, but how do you feel about fees, especially targeted fees that might be used to change behavior? Like I think one of the bills is it was a twenty cent plastic bag tax fee. Okay. Are the, talk about those kind of things that you think could change behavior and maybe make a little side revenue. Well, if it's fees and it's going to go for a particular program that is really needed, we'll be open to considering it. But when you look at considering increasing the barrel tax, which we did last year, I don't think it's going to survive. Uh, other fees, like the vehicle weight tax, the registration tax, that's all passing along. Other fees that may be considered, I really don't know. But I did have a bill that I introduced on behalf of our Kona coffee workers in regards to the beetle. Because the beetle is affecting the propagation and growth of coffee beans here in the state of Hawaii, the Kona coffee. And it was initiated by the association that would like to have that assessment be used to eradicate that particular beetle that is affecting the overall coffee industry. That's the discussion we'll have, and we'll vet it. In closing, I am very much more concerned about the pension plan and the health plan. Because I cannot control, we cannot in the legislature control the increase in premiums that we all have to pay. The question will be, and you know, I shared it with the governor's office, in negotiation for HSTA is going to be 50-50. But next year, we start, we start the negotiations already in August for the next two years of collective bargaining. And I hope, as an employer of public employees, that we don't go to a 40-60 or a 55 employees you pay and the state employer pays 45. No. If I had my druthers, if I had resources, I'd like to restore it to the 60-40. Employer pays 60%, employees pay 40. Today, it's at 50-50. So they're not bringing home the money that they were generating before the past because they're paying more on their premiums. How can we try to address these type of issues? And it's not just the state. It's all employers statewide. I've shared with other business organizations, what would you do in my position when our utility cost goes up? I have no choice but to pay. And will I pass it on to the consumers? I don't want them to be paying more also in regards to food gasoline, etc. And that's the issue we in the legislature in the House will really have to vet it very, very carefully because the, the economy is just very fragile. What about gambling? You're already hearing noise about that. We barely started. The House has always been open and I just shared with the advocates that uh, if something comes from the Senate, maybe we'll consider it. But it died. It did die before the House in 2011 when we had to recommit the bill going to finance. So we had a vote, basically knowing that we did not have to vote. And that's why it was recommitted from the Judiciary Committee. It was supposed to go to the Finance Committee. And we did not get the votes on the floor to refer it to the Finance Committee. So I personally feel the House did its job. And the record will show that we tried to get a vote where we didn't have the votes. Has was, anything changed in a year? I really don't know if, because we haven't talked to the members. But uh, we'll see what happens if the Senate's willing to consider gaming also. They would have started. Because have they had a hearing the past session? My answer to you is no. The House of Representatives did. There's another vehicle alive also in the uh, dealing with the Hawaiian homelands, so having gaming on Hawaiian homes. And those are the topics that uh, are alive and well in the House. But other than that, we're set to go. A steady course of action. No peaks and valleys, but just a course of action that is responsible and balanced as we move forward. Speaker, say when, when, yep. when, you, when you talk about granting exemptions um, for uh, procurement or maybe for for some kind of environmental review, uh, I, I'm sure that raises some eyebrows because people are like, well, yes. what, what's he talking? Give me an example. What, what kind of projects are you talking about? A great case was what happened with the Clarence T.C. Ching football field. There were competitor bidders, and somebody appealed the process, and it took another three to four months to get it done. That three to four months added cost to the project, and that's the kind of thing you should try to. Ask the uh, state state agencies to look into maybe cutting it back to a deadline, or a, you know, a set deadline that if there is an appeal to a bid, that you get it done in 15 to 30 days, or just to grant them and let them do the sole source. Because at the end of the day, in regards to procurement works, you've got to trust these civil service state employees that they're doing the right thing. And then also the provision that uh, I shared with the House leadership that if we do these exemptions on procurement. EIS, SMA, etc. It's a three-year, four-year sunset and take a review process. Are you, are you all worried about opening the door to possible deals? 
think of possible abuse? Are you worried about what? what well, there has been possible, you know, there has been abuses in the past. But no matter what, at this point, to get the jobs moving, you've got to consider those regulatory processes because it's not just tax credits or tax exemptions or etc. These processes add to the cost of every state project and council project. And if I can get one more question, you, you, yes. yeah, and you're probably not inter interested in this one, but I'm working on something maybe a little different. You, you mentioned your, your uh, coffee beetle bug bill. Yes. So, what would that do? Tell me about your bill. The bill would assess a penny a pound or something like that, and then with that amount of money that we generate, it would be used for the Department of Ag to go out and eradicate that beetle that's affecting the coffee industry on the Big Island. A uh, question on reapportionment. Yes. Uh, will the lawmakers do anything to push that February 1st deadline off, or what? Can we? At this point, my answer to you is no. I'll leave it up to the commission. People have talked, members have talked about intervening, and I said no. Because if you do that, you look like you're just supporting the status quo. Right. But I mean, to give What's that? time to sort out, you know, those details. I mean, well, February 1st is a deadline. Let the commission make that determination in making the request to the legislature. But I will not take any initiatives at this point from the legislature because it looks like a status quo or we're just protecting ourselves. And that's it. The mayors are going for the money committee this afternoon. Can you say anything about the TAT? Do they have anything to worry about? At this point, for the House, it was never part of our overall financial plan the past year. So I don't know. But uh, we'll see what happens with the Senate if they want to take it away. But uh, I just want to have a steady course of action. Don't do these type of extreme, you know, revisions or repeals or amendments. Let it run its course and see where things are at. And the counties do need the money also. Let's be honest. You know, and the past year, this past six months, in April, I had a lot of calls. And you know what it was on, DJ? Well, our water rates. It hit home. Water rates and sewer rates. And I got calls in regards to the vehicle weight tax and the registration fee increases. You know, it's all city. <laughs> but, but as an elected official, you know, in the grassroots, I get the calls. And from the business side, it's the same thing. How do you control the cost of living here in the state of Hawaii? Ocean transportation cost has risen with the bunkers, you know, surcharge fuel, all of this. But. Uh, my point to you in regards to the original question, I really don't know. But for the House of Representatives, I feel very confident that uh, the 11.5% growth that the Council has projected as of last week will meet that obligation in addressing the 130 million shortfall.